Well, hey there, all my pixies and peeps. Thanks for tuning in to the Purple Pixie. And welcome, or welcome back, to the Fairy Garden, which is what I call my craft room. Today's video has one project, and it's part of the What Would You Make Challenge. That's hosted by Zaina at OK at Home DIY, Marsha over at Marsha's Mush and Stuff, and their co-host this month is Sandy from Sandy Lumber Mill DIY. And I'll tell you more about all that later, but for now, let's jump right into our project. It's a welcome to our nest porch decor. Now, take a good look at this magazine rack slash toilet paper holder, because it's been in my master bathroom for 25 years. Yep. Ever since my parents built this house 25 years ago, my mom installed this in the master bathroom the, the day they moved in. And she sure made sure that it was not coming down easily. Just look at the holes that it left in the wall from the anchors and the screws. I mean, look how deep those holes are. I'm going to have to patch that. No worries, though. I'm capable of doing that. But right now, this thing needs a makeover and since my daughter and her boyfriend just got their new place i'm going to give this to them as a housewarming gift now we've been crafting all kind of stuff together for her new place and she's bought the materials and relied on me for the know-how but this is going to be a surprise and it all came about because of one of those little wooden birdhouses she bought at Dollar Tree and we just couldn't figure out what to do with it. So I got to thinking and this is what I came up with. So starting out, after I took it off the wall and cleaned it up really, really good, I gave it a good coat of my folk art chalk paint in the color Java. And because I was so excited to make this, I didn't want to sit around and wait for the paint to dry, so I got out the hair dryer and dried it up. And then it was time to give it a little bit more character with some of this Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel and my little chippy brush. I really love how these two colors complement each other, especially when you're going for that wood look. And I know it seems silly to paint wood and make it look like wood, but that orange wood really had to go. So now I'm going to take some of this fabric canvas, you know, the kind that we always take off the frame so we can make reverse canvases, and then we don't make reverse canvases and we have canvas laying around. Well, this is one of those canvases. And I finally have a project that I can use it on. So I'm measuring it out to fit across the front of the magazine rack, or what we call it, porch decor now. I'm not really sure, but I'm measuring it to fit across the front. But I do cut it a bit bigger so we can hem the sides of it. And using the territorial beige again, I give it a sloppy coat, which is a waste of time because I end up going back and painting over this with my plaster chalk paint. But for now, this is what you'll see. And now to hem the sides, of course, I'm just going to take some hot glue and fold over the edges. Make sure to use those finger protectors because even though this is canvas and not burlap, that hot glue really does go through. And if you have sensitive fingers like me, you could burn yourself, which I do quite often. So those silicone finger protectors are actually a must in my craft stash. Now, as I hem these edges, I'm not really worried about how big the flaps are that I'm folding over because we're just going to go in with our scissors and trim them up after. Even though I painted it that ugly brown, I still want it to be pretty and I don't want these little edges to show. So you may be thinking this is where I decide to repaint it, but nope. I'm just going to give it a good dry brushing of the color plaster by Folk Art, which again is a waste of my time because, as I said, I do go in later and repaint the whole canvas. But I did want to show you that I gave it a good heavy dry brushing because this is how you'll see it throughout the video. 
Now once I'm done with the paint, I'm going to take this burlap ribbon, trim it down to size, and I'm going to take this heat transfer decal that I cut out on my old silhouette cameo, and I'm going to put it onto the burlap ribbon. After I trim off those gold wire edges, of course, because that's got to go. Now I'm going to take a few strands from each edge, pull them off, and distress this burlap ribbon by giving it a more unraveled look. If you're new to heat transfer vinyl, here's a neat tip for getting your decal centered. Simply fold it in half for the sticky sides facing out, and then fold your project in half, line up the lines, and there you go, centered decal every time. Now once that's on there, I'm going to distress the burlap using my Waverly chalk paint in plaster. Simply because burlap on distressed canvas just isn't rustic enough. Nowadays, the more aged and weathered and torn it looks, the better. Now here I am gluing the burlap ribbon onto my canvas. And you might be saying, but Pixie, I thought you repainted that canvas. Well, I did towards the end of the project. And I went around it with a very fine paintbrush to make sure I got all that plaster underneath the edges of the burlap ribbon. But again, for now, this is how it will look through most of the project. So as I promised, let's talk a little bit about our hosts today. First up is Zaina over at OK at Home DIY. I'll leave her channel link in my description box and you really need to go check it out. If you enjoy farmhouse decor, dupes and trash to treasure, she's your gal. And the other host is Marsha from Marsha's Mush and Stuff. She does some great Dollar Tree hauls and she's an amazing crafter too. I really love her channel. And their co-host this month is my friend Sandy from Sandy Lumber Mill DIY. She's a crazy Canadian with a true talent. She loves to wood burn and has even invented her own wood burning gel called Dragon's Breath. All three of those ladies are amazingly talented crafters, so when you get a chance, go check out their channels using the links in my description box below. And don't forget to check the playlist for this challenge as well. Because I'm sure you're going to love what you see and find out what everybody came up with for this challenge this month. And now back to our project, I wanted to show you how to take a permanent vinyl decal and put it on top of an offset, which is basically just a different color behind it to make it stand out more. So I've got my two decals cut out and I'm taking the smaller one and using my old Cricut scraper, I'm going to flip it over and press it down onto the transfer tape. And since I, once again, cut this with too much pressure, I'm going to use my homemade pin pen to release the paper from the back of the vinyl. And this homemade pin pen is simply a mechanical pencil that I removed all of the lead and then replaced it with a sewing needle. It gives you a retractable pin head that is great for weeding vinyl. But without the $15 to $20 price tag that comes with a pen pen. So now to ensure that I get my decal centered on the offset, I taped the offset down to a bag because it won't stick to my silicone mat. And I easily placed the decal onto the offset. This one did kind of get away from me and stuck to the offset before I wanted it to, but thankfully it was centered. So now I remove it from the bag and once again remove the paper backing from the vinyl decal. Now, I probably should have mentioned earlier that I changed my mind quite a lot on this project and this one time is no exception because I thought that by going with black and white letters on the words welcome to, it would help tie in to this door round that we made for her out of a Dollar Tree pizza pan. However, 
I decided that this porch decor piece needed to stand alone and not match something else, but match itself. So while you see me lay the vinyl down, you'll also notice later on that I redid it in a different color. And so this project that I was in such a hurry to finish seemed to take forever due to the fact that I kept changing my mind. But hey, as the designer and creator of this project, that's my right to change my mind as often as I want to, or as often as I had to. So take a good look of how I burnished down the decal with the vinyl paper, only for me to have to peel it up in a few minutes later. I recut another decal with some white vinyl but it just wasn't distressed enough. So I went in with my plaster chalk paint and gave it a good coat. Once it was dry, I transferred it onto my transfer tape. And then the trick to not getting paint all over your project is to just burnish down the letters a little bit enough to make them stick to the project so you can remove your transfer tape and then go back over them with some of that paper from the backing and burnish it down even better. I did have to go in and do a couple of touch-ups, kind of like stencil bleeds, but nothing major. And now I have this really small decal that I cut out and I'm going to show you how to do reverse weeding. You put your transfer tape down first, remove the paper backing from the entire cut piece. And now, with the sticky side facing up, you weed your decal. This reverse weeding technique comes in so handy when you're weeding a very small decal with very fine lettering and such like that. You just have to be careful to work in small sections and not actually get your fingers on the sticky decal. But I'm here to tell you that once I discovered how to reverse weed, it changed my vinyl game completely. So, some of the things that my daughter purchased from Dollar Tree were some of these little cube boxes with the little inserts. And this is one of those things where at the last minute I decided to add it onto my project. So, I give the whole thing, inside and out of both pieces, a good coat of the Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle. And of course I have to go in and dry brush some more of that territorial beige to make it match the rest of the rack. And I absolutely love these little mini chippy brushes. They are perfect for distressing and dry brushing. So if you ever come across them, make sure you pick some up. Now you may have noticed that I cut those fine little letters out in the color black. So I'm going to have to paint a little arch so that they stand out better. And I'm not the greatest painter, but I did my best. I drew it on with a pencil and centered it as best I could. And then with a fine paintbrush, I went in with the color plaster and then put my decal down when it was dry. And now we get to that little birdhouse that started this whole thing. I decide that I'm going to start out with a base coat of my folk art chalk paint in the color condo- I mean, in the color sheepskin. Ah, uh, I really hate the name of that color, but I digress, it is pretty. So once I have a base coat of it on my little birdhouse, I'm also going to take that dowel that used to hold the toilet paper rolls and I'm going to give it a good coat in that same color. Now, off camera I did sand this down to get that varnish and color off of it because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with it. But it's going to be the post for our birdhouse. And this little drawer pull, it is natural wood that I got from Walmart years ago, is going to be the little drawer pull on the little cube that we painted. And here's where another change of mind comes into play. I decided I was going to play around with some paints 
and see what kind of stain I can make for these pieces. Put a few spritzes of water into this plastic cup that came from a cruise line that we shall not name. And I put one or two drops of this territorial beige in there. I mix it up and then I'm going to try it out on my dowel. But guess what? I don't like it. So I'm just going to wipe it off and try again. Let's add some more color to it. So I take my little trippy brush and I'm just going to dip it in the lid of that truffle paint. Get a little on the tip and put it into the cup. And then of course I had to wipe out the lid of my truffle paint because I had plaster and territorial beige on this brush. Now you see how I'm pressing the brush up against the side of the cup? That's to get most of the water out because even though I'm not really doing a dry brush, I do want it to be streaky. So I don't want a full coat. And it seems to work really well. I like the color, so I'm just going to go with it. And then I give the same treatment to the little drawer pool as well as the birdhouse. You must forgive me for going on and on and never shutting up, but I get excited about my projects and I really want to share them with you. That's why I started this channel. But the last thing I want to do is waste your time and mine. So I speed things up and that means I have to talk a little constant just to make sure you understand what I'm doing and to get the instructions that you need in case you want to make it yourself. Besides all that, I live alone, so I don't get to talk to people very often. So when I do, rest assured, I've got plenty saved up to say. And likely, I'm not going to shut up for a while. So instead of just saying thanks for watching, thanks for listening too. Now, I got a little heavy on the dry brushing at the edges of the eaves of the birdhouse. But instead of wasting a baby wipe, I'm just going to take a napkin and spritz it with some water and gently knock over my cup of paint stain and then gently go back and wipe off some of the paint underneath the eaves of the birdhouse. After wiping for a while, I decide to blot and blend and that really worked out well. I must say, after all the blending and colors that I put on this birdhouse, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now I'm going to go back in with that truffle and give these a little darker coat. Once I'm happy with that, I go with my Gorilla Wood Glue and I'm going to glue on the little drawer pull onto the little drawer. But of course it wouldn't be a purple pixie video without a little mishap and I got a little heavy handed with the glue. so. I had to wipe it all off and go in with the little bit glue that was left on my drawer pool, which was plenty to stick it onto the little drawer. Now, here's another mishap. Don't mix your wood glue with your hot glue. This ended up falling off of the birdhouse and I ended up having to go back in with just some wood glue. So, if you're new here and you're liking what you're seeing and hearing, then I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and join the pixie party. Here in the fairy garden, we have plenty of cheap crafts and plenty of cheap laughs. So if that's the kind of thing you're looking for, well, you found it. And if you'd like to help me monetarily so I can buy some of those cheap craft supplies, you can hit the link down in my description box to buy me a coffee. Every penny of that money goes towards buying my craft supplies, which are also linked down below on my Amazon wish list, should you choose to help me out monetarily in that manner. I'm on a pretty non-existent budget, so any bit of help that you can pass on is greatly appreciated. So let me say thank you to all of my viewers and members of the Pixie Party for the love and joy and support, because without you, I wouldn't be here. 
Now let's glue this little cube drawer onto our project and see if I can get it centered. Because we all know measurement and straight lines are not my cup of tea. And it's a good thing I'm just going to use the Gorilla Wood glue rather than hot glue as well because that way I can slide it around at will until I get it just right. Which is not so easy to do when you have to worry about camera angles. But I'm pretty proud of myself because I managed to do just right. I only had to slide it around a little bit to get it centered. Now I also need to tell you how messy this project got. Because rather than using some floral foam, I cut this piece of styrofoam out of some shipping packaging and I had that stuff everywhere. But I scooped it all up into a little plastic baggie and I'm saving that for snow when I make my Christmas DIYs. And as if the styrofoam wasn't messy enough, I'm gonna take this Spanish moss that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna hot glue it onto the styrofoam. Now check this out. As I'm digging into a brand new bag, I find a stick. And later on, I found another one in there too. And as I do everything, I save both of those as well because those are gonna make cute arms on a snowman for those Christmas DIYs. Now, you definitely don't want to do like I did and press this in there with your bare fingers because this stuff really does get hot. And you may notice that little clothespin on the corner of the canvas that is now painted in plaster. That's going to be handy for anyone that needs to leave them a note in case they might not be home. I tell you what, between the moss the styrofoam and the paint jobs that I did on this thing I sure had a mess on my hands to clean up afterwards but it was all worth it because I really love how it turned out and I'm hoping my daughter will love it too but I'm pretty sure she will sorry about the camera angle I didn't realize it was out of frame whenever I was stuffing this moss in there but you're not really missing anything. I'm just gonna lay down some more hot glue and make sure the moss sticks to it pretty well because this thing is gonna be outside so I don't want the moss flying around everywhere. And finally I'm just going to wedge that dowel with the birdhouse on it behind the styrofoam so it won't be going anywhere either. And now are you ready for the final reveal? Good because here it is! And as if this wasn't cute enough, I decided to make her some seasonal garden flags that she can hang on the bottom that are also reversible. I'll be making another one for spring and winter time as well, but for now, these will do. So I'm dying to know what you think. Was this magic or mishap? Let me know in the comments down below. And I want to give one big thank you again to the hosts and co-hosts of this challenge this month. And remember, you can always support my channel just by hitting the like button, leaving a comment, 
subscribing and ringing my bell and hit all so you'll know every time I upload a video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day and remember that all of me loves all of you.